Anthony Ray Hinton spent 30 years in prison for his wrongful conviction. One of the most incredible stories I've ever heard. A case that's garnered national attention. One of the worst nightmares out there. He said, I don't care whether you did it or didn't do it, but I'm going to make sure you found guilty of it. I just somehow wanted to protect my mom. I didn't quite know whether she understood. He wasn't convicted because he committed a crime. He was convicted because he was poor. I had never been so convinced of someone's innocence than I had in Mr. Hinton's case. Very scary to think that a man could be killed if he's actually innocent. Anthony suffered in isolation and darkness. I'm so sorry. How long would it be before they come and get me? The last time she saw you and said, son, when are you coming home? Yes. When are you coming home? He said, whether you shot him or not, I don't care. You have been found guilty, I sentence you to death. The entire country was watching 30 years of pure hell. An incredible story of faith and resilience. I don't know if I could have done it. It can not get no lower for me. I've seen hate at its worst. He was ordered to spend the remainder of his life in prison. Right next to a convicted KKK member. There stood two white gentlemen that i never seen before. I said, can I help you? He said, we have a warrant for your arrest. We want you to put your hands behind your back. I show my mother the handcuff, and like any good mother, she began to scream and holler, what are those handcuffs doing on my baby? This scene to set the detective off. He turned around, he looked at me, and he said, we have decided that we're going to charge you with two counts of first-degree capital murder. I said, but I haven't done any of that. You got the wrong person. He said, let me tell you something right now. I don't care whether you did it or didn't do it. He said, but I'm going to make sure you found guilty of it. And by the way, there's five things that are going to convict you. He said, number one, you black. Number two, a white man is going to say you shot him. Whether you shot him or not, I don't care. He said, number three, you're going to have a white prosecutor. Number four, you're going to have a white judge. And number five, you're going to have an all-white jury. He said, do you know what that spell? And he looked at me and he said, conviction, 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 conviction. He said, I really believe you didn't do it. He said, but since y'all is always taken up for one another, he said, take this for your homeboy. I goes before a judge. The judge proudly stand up and say, Anthony Ray Hinton, you have been found guilty, and it is the order of this court that I sentence you to death. I really lost sight for a few seconds. I was just totally in shock. I just somehow wanted to protect my mom. I didn't quite know whether she understood. I didn't want the world to believe that my mom had raised a son that was capable of taking another human being life. And so I asked God to let the truth come out. The last time she saw you and every time she heard your voice, it said, son, when are you coming home? Yes. When are you coming home? She would ask me that and I, I lied to her every time she asked me. A mm -hmm. uh, moment they're working on it, uh, uh, they just gonna take some time. And I was transported to death row. I did not say a word to another human being for three years. Going into the fourth year, I woke up approximately 1 a.m. to the sound of a grown man crying, a man that I had lived by should never asked him his name or where he was from. But at an early age, my mother taught me compassion. My mother taught me no matter what one does in life, he or she still deserve compassion. And it was that compassion that I hollered through this brick wall. And I said, sir, do you need me to call and get the officer back here? He said, no. My name's Ray, I said. There was silence. There was something in this guy's voice. He sounded alone. I'm from Preco, I said. I'm proud to be the son of Bueller Hinton. 
the best mother God ever sent down to this earth who can make a pie like an angel and swat you like the devil if you try to eat it before she says so. I heard a few guys laugh, but I didn't know if the guy whose name I was waiting on was one of them. Mama makes a pretty good pie herself, he finally said. My name is Henry. Henry was uh, a Ku Klux Klansman sort. His daddy was a grand wizard in the Klan's organization. Henry's father was upset that a black man had got found not guilty in a murder trial, and he ordered him to go out and kill the first black man that they came across. As I got to know Henry and, and realized that Henry had been taught to hate all his life. I had no anger toward Henry. He had been taught to fear blacks. He had been trained to hate. Henry and I became friends and before Henry was moved to the death room to wait for his execution, we talked one last time. I'm sorry, Ray. I'm sorry for what I've done. I know you are. God knows you are. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I have a brother named Ray. He's my brother, too. I could hear that Henry was crying, and my heart broke for him. Henry was my friend. It wasn't complicated. I would show him compassion, because that's how I was raised. Compassion doesn't know what color you are, and I think Henry felt more love from the black man on death row than he ever did at a KKK meeting or from his own father and mother. And I was told that Henry said, all of my life, my father, my mother, my community taught me to hate. The very people that they taught me to hate are the very people that taught me how to love. And tonight, as I leave this world, I leave this world knowing what love feels like. And I often say that if we can teach people to hate, we should be able to teach them to love. I really believe Henry left this world a better man than he came in. In 30 years, I witnessed 54 men walk by my cell only to be executed. And I kept saying, how long can I survive this madness? How long will it be before they come and get me? The night I found out that my mom had died, I really didn't give a damn whether I live. And that night as I tried to sleep, it was as though my mom came in the cell and stayed in my ear all night long. And I could hear her saying, I did not bring you up to be a quarter. And earlier that morning, I called Mr. Stevenson and I said, Mr. Stevenson, I want you to give the state of Alabama all the hell you can give. Stevenson and the Equal Justice Initiative spent 16 years working on Mr. Hinton's case. Mr. Hinton should have never been convicted. Uh, he wasn't convicted because he committed a crime. He was convicted because he was poor and didn't have the resources to prove his innocence. It's the United States Supreme Court that finally intervened. The result was a new trial, the break Hinton had been waiting for. The state of Alabama dropped the case after a new look at the evidence could not match the bullets to the gun, and Hinton was released. It took Mr. Stevenson 16 long years to finally win my freedom. Would you believe this is the first time I've been in the rain in 30 years? It was wonderful. I, I mean, I could just stay in the rain that whole day if, if, if I could have. And everybody kept saying, get out of the rain, you get sick. I said, I haven't had rain on my body for 30 years. My mom. Uh, I still love her, and although she's not here, she will always be in here. Uh, there's not a day that go by, not a night that I don't take her photo and kiss and say good night, Mom. My mother had worked all her life to have a home built, and when I came home, I wanted to fix this old house up, and it has a connection with me and her, and I did it in her memory. Just because someone do you wrong, it don't make the right that you go do them wrong. I can dwell on the negative 
and never grow. So I choose to embrace uh, the good. I don't sense any bitterness. Why is that? Bitterness kills the soul. I cannot hate. I've seen hate at its worst. What would it profit me to hate? Therefore taught me that either you love or you hate. Therefore taught me you either help or you harm. Therefore taught me no matter where we are, we still can love and we still can help one another. If we can teach people to hate, we should be able to teach them to love.